In the videos leading up to this one, I've demonstrated how I go from a bare metal enclosure to a customized finish. All that's left now for me is to install the components. A few things I'll need are a rivet gun, various standoffs, and a very special kind of glue called Scotch Weld. Let's take a minute first to talk about Scotch Weld. Simply calling it glue is a huge understatement. It's an extremely powerful epoxy adhesive. When this stuff cures, it creates a nearly unbreakable bond. This is not something people would generally use around their home. It's really made for industrial and professional use. For people who haven't used it before and might be thinking about it now, be sure to read all of the precautions on the package. There are three items for applying it. There's the glue itself that comes in this special format container with two liquids that are held separate. A dispenser gun, which is made to simply push the two liquids out at an even rate and a detachable mixing nozzle. The disposable nozzle is made to mix the liquids together thoroughly with a one-to-one -one ratio. Once the mixture is allowed to sit inside the nozzle for about four minutes, the epoxy will harden and that nozzle will be rendered useless from there on out. This usually becomes a factor in deciding how I'm gonna work. For the purposes of this video though, you won't see me worrying too much about it. But normally, I'd set up an assembly line and move through it as quickly and safely as I can to maximize the use out of each nozzle. First step is affixing the bezel. It's pretty straightforward. The rectangle and the notches you saw me cut in another video are already accurate so that the bezel falls right into place. It only takes the smallest amount of scotch weld to secure it. I put that on four spots and then I stack enclosures on top of each other and weigh them all down with these steel 1-2-3 blocks. I attach the standoffs and solder the LEDs onto the daughter boards to make sure I can create an accurate fit. I've done this in such a way that I can ensure enough placement accuracy and I can remove the daughter board later if there's a need to. Only the standoffs are affixed to the enclosure. I haven't mentioned it up until now, but way back when I was drilling out the enclosures, I followed a process for making spots on the inside of the enclosure. This eliminates the guesswork where to apply the scotch weld. Making these indicators was done exactly like how I repeatedly drilled holes in all the enclosures. But I used an end mill bit to just touch off the surface, so they only leave this slight round mark. You can see the 10 places where scotch weld will eventually go. The final use of Scotch Weld is for the LCD screen standoffs. These standoffs are also what the main board will be mounted to. Now's the time to remove the protective film from the bezel and the LCD screen. I also use a bit of compressed air at this point to dust everything off. Accuracy needs to be high for the screen alignment, so I use a mirror and a flashlight to check it before committing to the final position. I'm using these panel mounted MIDI jacks, and I found the easiest and quickest way to affix these permanently is using rivets. The only thing needed is a rivet gun and selecting the correct size rivets for the holes. This is all very affordable and saves a ton of hassle.
And that's pretty much it. The foot switch and the power jack each come with washers and nuts, and the main board mounts to the top of the LCD screen. All that's left from here is to solder some parts on, do testing, clean it up, and box it. Thanks for watching this series of videos. I really wanted to take this opportunity to share some of what I've learned because I've benefited so much from other people who've also shared, and I hope you found the entire process as interesting as I do.